Greetings and welcome to the Anatomy of an APA Book Citation. My name is Sean Heron and I am the Social Sciences Librarian here at Cal Poly Pomona. If you have any questions regarding this video in particular or APA citation in general, please feel free to contact me. My email address is smharen at cpp.edu. In this tutorial, we're going to br briefly introduce APA style citation and provide you with a basic example of the bibliographic citation of a book in APA style, which we will then dissect, describing each of the constituent parts of that citation, why they're included, and how to format them in citation. Hopefully, at the end of this video, you will understand the basic principles of citing a book in APA style, and will be able to construct your own basic book citations. Start out with, what is APA citation? The APA citation style is laid out in the APA Publishing and Style Guide which follows the standards adopted by the American Psychological Association, hence the acronym. The citation style is used most commonly by programs in the social sciences, such as psychology, linguistics, sociology, economics, and criminology, as well as some business and nursing programs. As of 2019, the APA Handbook is in its seventh edition, so the version of APA citation we will be covering in this video is APA 7. Okay, so now that we know what APA citation is, how do we create one? Well, this is where we get into the gory details of dissecting a bibliographic citation to show you how it works. However, to really get the most out of this part of the video, it helps if you have the proper tools. At the very least, a paper and pencil or pen, and maybe some highlighters if you think they would help. Feel free to pause the video now and collect your tool. Got everything? Great! Okay. So here you see the bibliographic citation we're going to dissect. Just in case you're wondering, no I have not written a book titled The Book of Everything, An Exploration of the Infinite, but this example will serve our purposes. Take your paper and write the citation exactly as you see it on your screen in the center of your piece of paper. Make sure to leave plenty of room for notes. Go ahead and pause the video while you write down the citation. Ready? Awesome! So I'm going to take this citation apart piece by piece and describe each part, why it's there, and how it's formatted. As this is just a basic example, I may refer to some other situations you may come across while citing sources. If at any point you need more time to make notes about what I'm talking about, feel free to pause the video and then start again when ready. So the first part of most citations will be the author's name. In APA style, this is formatted last name, comma, first initial, with a period at the end of the first initial. Why does APA only use the first initial? Well, if when you look at this citation, if you didn't already know, would you be able to tell whether this article was written by Sean or Sandra Heron? You wouldn't, right? And that's by design. APA citations only use the first initial as a way of preventing gender bias in article citation. The other reason to format citations last name first is more structured. Your work cited page is organized alphabetically by author's last name, hence it makes sense for it to be the first thing that pops out in a citation. But what happens when there's more than one author? Well, now it gets a little more complicated. The first author is formatted last name, comma, first initial, comma, then you use the ampersand or and symbol, followed by the second author, whose name is formatted just like the first author. In this case, Heron, comma, S, comma, ampersand, Musk, comma, E, because why not? If there are three authors, you format the author's names the same, but you place a comma between authors one and two, and the ampersand goes before the last author. So in this case, Aaron, comma, S, period, comma, Musk, comma, E, period, ampersand, Obama, B, comma, B, period. You use this format for up to 20 authors if they are all credited on the same article. Always end with a period. After the author name comes the year of publication, which is placed in parentheses and ends with a period. We include the date after the author name in APA citation because both of these elements are used to link the citations in the bibliography with the in-text citations in your paper. The next element in the citation is the title. Only certain words of the title are capitalized in an APA book citation. The first word of the title, the first word of the subtitle, if there is one, by the way, the subtitle is usually the part of the title that comes after a colon, and any proper nouns. All other words in the title 
are in lowercase in APA style. Also, in APA style, the title is italicized. Finally, we include the publisher name. We include the publisher name in order to distinguish between different editions of a book, where pagination may also be different. The publisher name is followed by a period. Now, if the book is an ebook, the URL for the ebook is included after the publisher. Including a URL in this case also provides us with an opportunity to demonstrate what happens when your citation extends to a second line. When a citation is more than one line long, you use what is called a hanging indent, which indents all lines below the first line of an entry. And you can get Microsoft Word or Google Docs to do this for you. That takes care of the bibliographic citation. But the bibliographic citation is only one half of the APA citation. Every APA citation has two parts, the bibliographic citation and the in-text citation. Why do you need both? Well, the bibliographic citation helps your reader know what article you got the information from, but it doesn't tell the reader what part of you, what part of your work was taken from that work, nor does it tell the reader where in the article you cited you got that idea or quote. To learn more about in-text citations, check out our tutorial on in-text citations, APA style. Now, obviously, there are a lot more types of sources to cite than just books, and there are a lot more situations for citing books than we've covered in this brief video. If this video didn't answer your question, there are more resources available to help you cite your work. The Purdue Online Writing Lab, or OWL for short, provides an excellent website covering a lot of different scenarios and rules for APA citation. To access the OWL, simply type in Purdue OWL APA into Google, or the search engine of your choice. You can also reference the APA Publishing and Style Guide itself by typing APA 7 into OneSearch. Finally, you can always contact the librarian for citation assistance. You can email us at libraryhelp, one word, at cpp.edu. Thank you for watching. Thank you.